is my life, I shared my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us call to mind our sins as we celebrate this Eucharist. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. to all children of Israel, and had the prophets assembled to Mount Carmel. Elisha appealed to all the people and said, How long you will serve Deshu? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. The people, however, did not answer him. So Elisha said to the people, I am the only surviving prophet of the Lord, and there are 450 prophets of Baal. Give us two young bulls. Let them choose one, cut it into pieces, and place it on the wood, but start up no fire. I shall prepare the other plate, the other, and place it on the wood, but shall not start no fire. You shall call on, on your gods, and I will call on the Lord. The God who answers with fire is God. All the people answered, agreed. Elisha then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one young bull and prepare it first, for there are more of you. Call upon of you gods, but do not start a fire. Taking the young bull that was turned over them, they prepared it and called on Baal for, from morning to noon, saying, Answer us, Baal. But there was no sound, and no one answering, and they hoped around the altar they had prepared, when it was noon, Elisha taunted them, Call louder, for he is a God, and may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on journey, perhaps he is asleep and won't be awakened. They called out louder, and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom until blood gushed under them. Noon passed, and they remained in a prophetic state until the time for offering sacrifices. But there was no a sound, no one answered, and no one was listening. Then Elisha said to the people, Come here to me. When the people had done so, he repaired the altar of the Lord that had, had been destroyed. He took twelve stones for the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the Lord had said, Your name shall be Israel. He built an altar in honor of the Lord with the stones and made a trench around the altar, large enough for two measures of grain. When he had arranged the wood, he cut up the young bull and laid it on the wood. Fill our jars with water, he said, and pour it over the burnt over clearing and over the wood. Do it again, he said, and they, he did it again. Do it a third time, he said, and they did it a third time. The water flowed around the altar, and the trench was filled with water. At the time for offering sacrifices, the prophet Elisha came forward and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, that these people may know you, Lord. Our God, sorry. 
may know that you, Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to their senses. The Lord's fire came down and consumed the burnt offering, wood, stones, and doves, and it left up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God, the Lord is God, the word of the Lord. And it be to God. <coughs> The response is, keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for you, for in you I take refuge. I say to, to the Lord, my Lord, are you. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. They multiply their sorrows, who court other gods. Blood deviation to them I will not pour out nor will I take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. O Lord, my allotted portion and cup, you, you it is who holds fast my lot. I said, the Lord, even ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disrupted. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life. Fullness of joys in your presence that delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God, and guide me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to, ab to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So, does God exist? Uh, sometimes people behave like God does not exist. Religion sometimes just becomes a casual affair. And people go around their daily shows as though they are the lords and masters of this life, forgetting God. And he is for, uh, remembered in various instances. No, that should not be the case. God is God. He exists forever. And we exist because of him. Now, uh, we see that test which was made by Prophet Elijah. He is the only prophet that remained during his time, true prophet of God. People had gone to other regions, they were worshipping something called Baal, and they had convinced even the king and the queen that that was the true religion. So Elijah tells them, now, does God exist, the true God? And people are doubting. He calls them to Mount Carmel and tells them, let us just do this test to show that God exists. In Israel, they used to offer sacrifice to God. And if that sacrifice is offered by God, 
he would give a sign that he accepted it. However, those false religions had destroyed altars. People who followed uh, false religions had destroyed the altars where God was supposed to be worshipped and sacrifices offered. This time the temple is not yet uh, constructed. And we hear what happens that he tells the 450 prophets, false prophets, we can say for the record, let us offer sacrifice you offer to your gods, that I offer to my God. Whichever accepts the sacrifice, then people will know it is the true God. And he told them, okay, do the honors, start fast. So they prepare this bowl, young bowl, and it is slaughtered and put on the altar, and the false altar, and they start prayer. Only in the morning, they continue praying, and Elijah is telling them, probably your gods are, have taken a meditative walk. Maybe they are asleep, maybe in a journey. Call, call your gods, wake them up. Now we know that God is omniscient. He knows everything is omnipotent, omnipresent. He is present all the time. He is alive that never sleeps. He does not take a journey that he turns his back on us, on the, his work of creation. No, he is always present. He does not sleep. So it is a kind of mockery, wake your gods. And they continue praying, even lacerating their, their flesh. Until noon, and even after noon, and the, those gods failed. Then the hour of the divine mercy. At three o'clock, when the temple, the, the, the veil of the temple broke, when Jesus died at that time of the earthquakes, Elijah says, okay, now we are going to offer sacrifice to the true God. And he makes, he restores the altar, uh, stones, 12 stones each side, symbolizing the 12 tribes of Israel. And on that altar, he makes a trench and invites people. He, he puts his, uh, the slaughtered animal and he tells people, now we are going to pray to God to bring fire to consume the sacrifice. You might think that maybe I'm going to put a kind of fire secretly. So pour water, and they started pouring water from water jars. Those water jars of blessing we hear of in Cana of Galilee, full of water, and they poured water on this sacrifice until the trench and the whole water, and the whole altar and the wood was all drenched. And then he says, let us ask God to accept the sacrifice. Barely had he started, God came and consumed the sacrifice. Now, does God, God exist? And the people said, yes, yes, yes. The Lord is God, the Lord is God. That's what we read. During our time, people have become very secular, minded, forgetting God, living as though God has no place in their lives, creating systems that expel faith. And that is wrong. Elijah is reminding us God exists. God who has put everything in this world, God of order, God who has designed everything, not a God of chaos. When Jesus came, he talked about law. I did not come to abolish law. I'm not God of chaos. And all laws must be fulfilled, of course, good laws. 
Because God is God of order, he is not God of chaos. Even we read from Immanuel Kant, was, of course he wrote about God, but he was not a theologian, writing about government. Obey the law all the time. If you have a problem with the law, ask your representative to change that law, but don't break it. So God is a God of order, and he exists. And may we guide it by his law, and may we teach others to follow God's law. Then we have a place in heaven. There is hierarchy, Jesus is saying, they are those greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Little children, he said, those who humble themselves, and now we hear the people who follow God's law and teach others to do the same. Who are you? How do you call yourself a Christian, a follower of God? Is God only in your life when it is convenient? Or in season and out of season? Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for the gift of faith to know you and to know your law that they may be followed throughout the world. We pray to the Lord that people who have lost faith in God and in humanity may resuscitate that faith through the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the end of coronavirus that people will go back to churches to worship God, to offer sacrifice in truth and peace to the true God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear prayer. We pray that all who break the law will be converted to know good order and to follow God's law of love for God and humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear prayer. We pray for those who are suffering from coronavirus that the Lord give them healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear prayer. We pray for those who are taking care of patients of coronavirus and all other patients for strength and safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the dead, that they get their reward in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord God our Father, accept our prayers and petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer in each other's given. Human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Thanks be with us forever. By the ministry of this water and wine, may we come then the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our special drink. Let's be that that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, whom you, your word through whom you made 
all beings whom you sent us, our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death that manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, O Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth will be your glory, O Son of the highest. Rest the kind of the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. We are indeed holy, O Lord, come before holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like a new form so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the suppose ended, he took the chance, at once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, that bring her to a fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died with your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life that may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious grant, peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and virtuous we grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God,
called the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Not one that you should enter the my room. But when we say the word, my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving friend. As we pray from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for Francis' prayer through the Blessed Virgin Mary for protection against coronavirus. O Mary, Mary you shine continuously on our journey, journey as a sign of salvation and hope. For. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who are the cross, who are near to the pain of Jesus, keeping your faith firm. You salvation of our people, of our lineage, and we trust that you will provide for us to need so that that in our body, joy and celebration may return at this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to confirm ourselves the will of the Father, and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and took up our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we will go to the test. 